Um, hello everyone, and today in this video, we will be discussing all about enzymes. This is a general biology video, so yes, let's start into this. First, we'll be learning the basics of enzymes. Enzymes are basically catalysts that they lower activation energies of different chemical reactions. Because in different chemical reactions, you need an activation energy for it to all go through. And lowering this activation energy makes the chemical, chemical reaction in the body faster, because you pretty much need less energy for it. Now, enzymes are a type of protein, so they're also known as protein catalysts. What enzymes do is they bind to substrates and they form a complex. And what happens is during this complex, it breaks down the substrate and it forms a product. And it forms a product in an enzyme. These chemical reactions are usually reversible. And the enzyme does not affect the chemical equilibrium of a normal reaction. Now we'll be learning about the basic rules of enzymes and their characteristics. The first thing is enzymes don't change during or after the reaction. That is because whenever you have an enzyme and you add it to a substrate, whenever the product is released, the enzyme is the exact same as it was before. Secondly, the binding of any substrate to an enzyme has the exact same properties of an ion binding to a protein or a ligand binding to a protein. And third of all, enzymes do not cause reactions in the presence, they just speed them up. That's very important as you can see that all enzymes do is that they lower, react they lower activation energies, but they don't actually change the end product. Fourth of all, Enzymes can either affect the forward or inverse reaction, and they only speed up the time the equilibrium is reached. And first of all, enzymes only lower the activation energy, but they do not, but not the energy added or released by the reactants in the chemical equation. This is especially important because the energy added or released by reactants is completely different than the energy or the energy lowered by the enzyme. Because the enzyme isn't there to, all the enzyme is there to do is help. Do not change anything. Next, we'll look about how enzymes and substrates bind together. The binding of an enzyme to a substrate is kind of related, as we said, to the binding of an ion and a protein. So the substrate will bind to a specific part of the enzyme called known as the active site, what well, kind of like the binding site in proteins. And there are some characteristics in the active site binding, but we'll look at a couple of them. Chemical specificity, affinity, saturation, and competition. I won't get into the deeps of these, but chemical specificity is basically like how well the act, how well does the substrate and the enzyme bind together, like how well does it fit inside, of, inside each other. Affinity refers to the strength of the binding between the, um, the strength of the binding between the active site of the substrate and the enzyme. And then saturation is pretty much in a given area, the amount of and the amount of active sites that are binded and competition is like the pretty much the competition for different active sites to bind to, for different substrates to bind to an active site. Now the degree to which the substrate can fit into the active site from this chemical specificity as we said, the better fits the more they come together. And there are two ways in which substrates can bind to enzymes, which will be displayed on the next slide. The first way is the locking key model, as you can see in the picture. In the locking key model, the enzyme and substrate fit right together in their own active site, then they form the complex and then break apart. This time they fit directly in. And so the next one we'll look about, um, the next one we'll look about, what happens is the substrates go into the active site, and they cause a change in the shape of the active site. As you can see right here, it's called the induced fit. The substrate and the enzyme in the picture don't actually match together, but whenever they bind, it cut the sub the active site conforms to the substrate, then it breaks off and forms the product. So this shows how the dependence between structure and form, even at a molecular level. Now onto the next slide. In this slide, we'll be talking about cofactors. Enzymes don't really just attach the substrates on their own, and they use small trace metals or substances known as cofactors to help them bind to substrate substrates. Cofactor basically change the conformational shape of the active site, so it's an easier fit to bind with the substrate. And they do this by form of modulation or allosteric modulation. We will, re we will review this in a later video. But the allosteric modulation, all you really, really need to know is that a molecule basically binds to an active site, but changes the shape of the active site. 
In typical scenarios, only a few trace molecules are actually needed. Now, there's a special type of cofactor called a coenzyme. A coenzyme is a cofactor which is organic and actually directly participates in the reaction. Reactions that use coenzymes usually involve the removal or the addition of a substrate. Now, here's an example. So the R is basically just the remainder of the, mo the remainder of the molecule. The R is going to um, the, the R is going to bind to 2H, that shouldn't say C, so that should say H, to hydrogen plus the coenzyme. Then with the enzyme as well, it's going to have um, the remaining molecule plus the coenzyme, it's going to bind to the hydrogen. So in the reaction just shown, the hydrogen atoms are now attached to the coenzyme. And then what's going to happen is there's going to be a second reaction in which the hydrogen molecules will go back to being a substrate and the coenzyme will go back to being in cofactor form. And there will pick up more hydrogen. Sorry, let's say hydrogen. So cofactors, well, we should learn, also come from vitamins. An example is methylcobalamin. Methylcobalamin is a coenzyme that is derived from vitamin B12 and NAD+, which is derived from niacin. Now we'll be talking about how enzymatic reactions are regulated. First, we'll be looking at substrate con um, changing the substrate concentration. The higher the substrate concentration, the higher the reaction rate. So what's going to happen is the enzyme is going to pick up more substrate. This will continue on until it reaches a maximum point where the enzyme can't pick up any more. And this is called saturate. This is called the maximum saturation. Now. Substrate concentration can be regulated by the, the supply of the substrate in the extracellular fluid and the cellular reaction that utilize the substrate or the availability of them. Next, we'll be looking about enzyme concentrations. Increasing the enzyme concentration to increase reaction rate as well as substrate concentration. In most cases, there are more substrates than there are enzymes, but when you add more enzymes into it, what's going to happen is more substrates will be binded even if enzymes are full. So what's going to happen is, the higher the enzyme concentration, the higher point saturation there will be, because there's more enzymes and more astrocytes to bind. And what happens is enzyme concentration can be um, changed by the rate of enzyme creation or breakdown, and it's also linked into protein synthesis, because enzymes are proteins. Now we'll be looking at the, the third thing, enzyme activity. Enzyme activity refers to the chemical specificity or the attraction between the substrate and the octocyte or the affinity. Modulations in this can cause a change in the rate or which the substrates are converted into a product. So an example is if the affinity is increased and all of all of the, all of the concentrations are cut the same, these they will have the exact same um, saturation. What happens is the substrate with the higher affinity is going to reach saturation much before the one with the low affinity substrate. Therefore, being faster, having a faster rate of reaction. Now, modulation of enzyme activity is very complex because there are multiple factors that can go into play with chemical specificity and affinity. Examples include regulation between the types of modulation and different hormones. Now, finally, we'll be going into the last part of this video. We'll be talking about multi-enzyme reactions. So, the first thing we'll have to look about the metabolic pathway. The metabolic pathway is a collective enzyme-mediated reactions leading to the creation of an end product. Now, an example is glucose breakdown. There are about 19 different reactions, and each reaction does one small part, but in the big picture, it does one major task. So now if you go to the left, left side of the picture, you can see a linear pathway. It's just A goes into B, goes into C, goes into C, goes into D, goes into E, then to F. Then we can see that's a linear pathway. That's the cyclic pathway, which kind of forms a circle, and it all goes back and rotates. And then from A to J to M forms a branch pathway, which there are two options. Now, collectively, all the metabolic pathways will look something sort of like what you see on the right picture, or maybe even just a small fraction of what you see on the right picture. And you can see it's very complex. Now we'll be looking at multi-enzyme reactions more, and a normal and linear enzyme mediated reaction looks something like this. Okay, all reactions are going to be reversible, except for the one from D to E, which we'll explain why later. And they all use an enzyme. But I couldn't just write that down. Sorry. Bye.
by increasing the concentration of the um uh, by increasing the concentration of substrate in A to B, you then increase the concentration of B, then C, and so on. This is known as a law of mass action. So obviously, you can see that there are different concentrations and therefore different reaction times within each reaction. And thus, there will be one reaction that is slower than every other reaction. This reaction is known as a rate limiting reaction. So basically, it slows down everything. The later reactions can't be any faster than the rate limiting reaction, similarly to the funnel of a water tube. The rate is pretty much determined by the size of the funnel the water goes through. This rate limiting step slows down the entire reaction, similarly to a toll booth on the side of the road. So therefore, regulating the rate limiting enzyme, the flow, the rate of the flow of the whole path can be decreased. This means you don't have to alter every enzyme in a reaction for the end product to be different. You just have to alter the rate limiting enzyme. Now we'll look about end product inhibition. End product inhibition is whenever the rate limiting enzyme is inhibited by the end product. This means if we're going all the way from A to E, the end product is actually a, mo a molecule used for the inhibition of the, mo of the rate limiting enzyme. This enzyme control also helps with reversing the metabolic pathway. So, reversing the metabolic pathway. This is a form of negative feedback, which is very important in the concept of physiology. Because if the if the rate limiting enzyme gets too fast, then the entire rate of the rate of flow of that certain enzyme is going to be way too high, which will disturb the rate of flow. But if the end product achieved comes there and starts inhibiting the rate limiting enzyme, it'll go back to normal and cause the rate of flow to be normal and achieve equilibrium. And so we'll look at now how it reverses the metabolic pathway. In the reaction, we have a bunch of reversible steps. As you can see here, all of them should be reversible except from D to E. Keep that in mind. And if the break, what happens is um, that step is actually irreversible because it takes too high of an energy count to actually reverse it. However, E can actually turn into D if the breakdown of a molecule can release a ton of energy. What can happen is this type from, let's say, from X to Y to release a lot of energy is going to use another, is going to use another enzyme. And this is going to have different bowed arrows that show this, that can have the reversibility between E to D. So, uh, this is the end of the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. As you're currently trying to hit 100 subscribers, it would really mean a lot to us. And um, this is really, this is pretty much my first video I made on this channel. So if you have any if you have any critiques that you would like to put, please put them down in the comments below. I I I accept any criticism, but it helps me get better. And please also comment what other um topics you'd like to see for general biology. And yeah, thank you for watching.